Hello and welcome back to another Tasty Blender tutorial. Today we are continuing our wooden vegetable series by doing materials. We'll learn a bit about PBR materials, I'll show you a couple of very useful plugins for Blender and we'll be getting stuff ready for our next step. And in the next part we'll take a look at lighting and rendering. So let's get into it. We can start working on the PBR texture. So how are we going to do the PBR textures? I'm just going to start with the carrot. So I'll divide my screen, shader, add a new material. And this material, I'm going to use Node Wrangler to set up the principal BSDF. Now, if you don't know what Node Wrangler is, it's extremely useful. You should go under your edit preferences, add-ons and search for Node Wrangler. You should enable this one because you have a very useful shortcut for principled BSDFs. You press Shift, Control, T, and it's going to open your search bar. You can select all of the maps for the principled BSDF and it's going to set them up automatically. In my case, I'll be choosing a wooden 8K that I downloaded previously. I'm just going to take off relative path because sometimes it has some issues importing them. Principal BSDF setup and it's set up everything as we want to. Let's go into our viewport shading over here so we can see what's happening with our texture. Now we're using the UV. We're not going to use the UV. We're just going to use this one and we'll try to manipulate the rotation so we have that sort of wooden type of look. So it kind of looks like it was whittled out of a piece of piece of wood or something. So this is more about finding that like cell that propagates all over the object. Now, this is working kind of well for our carrot because it's already kind of orange and we're gonna do the top green so it's gonna look like it's made out of green wood. So how do we do that? It's just going to be copy the material. So this is going to be our carrot. Now we're gonna go up here. We're gonna add a new material. We're gonna name this carrot leaves. I'm going to click on this drop down menu and paste the material. But now we have the same color. So the easiest way to solve that is shift A, search for a mix RGB node. And the second color, let's put in a that type of green. We also have to sort of match the hue so it's not too egregious. Use the mix to see how much of it is going to influence the initial color. And we can then just shift select the other two leaves reselect the main leaf and holding shift press q copy materials to select it that is also a add-on for the material workflow just search materials in your edit preferences so you go to edit preferences materials utilities so this is extremely useful for quickly just copying stuff copying materials see we also have here that cellular type of vibe Let's just increase the viewport here so we have a nice smooth surface. Now let's just check how this looks. Let's just set up a quick HDRI. This is currently in EV, so I'm going to change from EV to Cycles. And I'll change the feature set to Experimental and to GPU Compute. Now it's very important for the experimental part to be ticked because we will be using it for our material. We're going to choose one of these materials. We're going to go down into our materials, click under settings, and for the surface displacement, we'll choose displacement and bump. So it also takes into account the scale of our displacement. For this, though, we need the experimental mode so we can open the adaptive dicing scale. So the displacement is a bit more accurate. In our case, the displacement can be 0.020. So it's going to work perfectly fine for that. We don't need huge amounts of displacement for this one, if any at all. So it's going to be the same over here. I'm going to drop it down. Don't forget to put the displacement options, the displacement and bump in the material options. So it's like that. So whenever you change the scale, you can see in real time what's happening to your displacement. So we're also going to leave that at 0, 0 020, something like that. That's going to be our carrot. For the other materials, I would suggest using the same workflow. So we're just going to do them real quick. I'm going to copy the same material. So I'm going to add a new material, paste the material since we still have the old material inside. This one I'm going to rename it to, let's say, onion or 
garlic or whatever. So it's going to be named like that. Now, if I go into rendered view, you can see that it's this uh, sort of orangey color. We, we don't want that. It's not what we need for our, <laughs> for our onion. We need something a bit more violet. So I would add a color ramp. I will help it feed the vector from the mapping node. Now we can either add a mix RGB and then try and very naturally dial in the color so it looks like it's sort of almost a realistically made onion. So we can go, maybe we can make like a dark, oh, what's it called, like a red dark onion, something like that. Intensity. Maybe something like that. You can also change it to mix and then see how it behaves when we mix it slightly with the original color. I think that doesn't look really bad. You can also manipulate the color later. It's not like it's, okay, this is set in stone. And for our leak, we're going to try and use the same principle, though we'll do it a bit differently. So for the leak, it has to be a bit of a different color. So we're going to use this one to be leak base. So I'm going to paste the original material again, and I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the onion, only this time I'll be switching it to green. So I'm going to go again, mix RGB, I'm going to mix in the color like that, and I'm going to change it to a nice green color. It's a more intense green color, sort of like that, almost going towards aquamarine. We can make it just a bit darker. We can make it darker here and then on the other side we can make it a bit lighter. Something like that. However, the problem is that the celery is usually darker or rather lighter on the bottom and then it works up to be darker at the top. So what do we need to do? We need to switch these guys over here. We need to make this one absolutely white. So it's absolutely white there, though we are losing the actual orientation. And this is because it's influenced directly by the mapping node. So I'm going to take away that part and I'll add a gradient texture. And this gradient, I'm going to connect it to the factorial and I'll be using the easing or quadratic. In this case, I suggest that you try and find the one that you would like the most, so diagonal, whatever. And I'm just going to click on the gradient texture, select the gradient texture, and then Control T to set up a separate texture and mapping node. I can actually rotate it separately, so it's not influencing the other part. We can now dictate how much of our celery is going to be green, how much is going to be white. You can change it to B spline to have a nicer curve distribution like that. And that's going to be it. So you can also increase the mix so it's a bit more aggressive like that. And we can do the same here. We can select the smaller celery leaf, select the big one, shift Q, copy material to select it. And we have it like that. Now, if you're bothered by this white part, you can also go like that. You can just copy this material delete it, make a new material. We're going to name this one leak, let's say small. We're going to paste this material. And instead of deleting or changing or whatever, we're just going to bring this up slightly and we're going to change this color from white to greener. Sort of like it's almost trying to be or trying to become green on top. Sort of like that. And that's perfect. That's working perfectly, perfectly and nicely. And that's basically it for this tutorial. So hopefully you've learned a couple of new things. Hopefully this stuff will be useful to you. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. I always check those. I always take them to heart. Uh, if you feel so inclined, you can leave a like. It helps me out a lot. Uh, in our next part, we'll be taking a look at lighting, setting up the scene for rendering. However, I want to do a separate part for rendering because I can see a lot of confusion when it comes to cycles and I'll try to show you my procedure of making or rather optimizing the renders. So, see you in the next one. Bye.